Now she's one of the most iconic ladies of the century, so who better to help us mark International Women's Day than the amazing Annie Lennox, and it's always lovely <laughs> to have you here. Um, tomorrow you. is International Women's Day. What does that day mean to you? It's a significant day for all women that have been working to try to make change mm. in, in terms of gender equality all around the world. And it's a day when we can gather together, we can have events, and we can give the focus to the fact that there is so much disparity all around the world in terms of empowerment for girls and women. And in 2008, you founded uh, The Circle, and this was inspired by the notion that if women come together, that they can make great changes. But as you just said there, globally, there seems to be so much left to do. There is so much left to do, and the, the facts are shocking, you know, Holly? Mm. When you consider that one in three women globally have experienced physical or sexual violence mm. in their lifetime. Oh, that's horrible. It's a massive statistic, one statistic. I'm going to throw a few statistics at you, no, but they're fine. facts, you know? Out of the 757 million illiterate adults in the world today, two out of three are women, mm. you know? Yeah. And 603 million women live in countries where domestic violence is not considered a crime. Um, some of these facts are part of the film, actually, that, that you've made, and we're going to show some of this now because it's very powerful. Here it is. One in three women and girls are impacted by physical or sexual violence in their lifetime. Over 2.7 billion women are legally restricted from having the same choice of jobs as men. 603 million women live in countries where domestic violence is not considered a crime. Around the world, we still have a very long way to go before every woman and girl has access to equal rights. And it is shocking and it is powerful. And I'm sat here thinking, right, what, what can I do? Yes. What can I do sat here now to make a difference? Because it seems like such a huge task. I would say find your part in the women's movement. The women's movement is a global movement that has been going on since the suffragettes' time. Yeah. And each one of us can become an agent for change in your own way. I use my platform, I use my voice as often as I can. And, I, and you, you mentioned The Circle before, which is, which is a, now a charitable organisation that I had the thought, you kind of originated it and founded it, where women can come together and discuss how they can maybe create, uh, have a, a cake sale, something to create funds, you know, to support mm. grassroots organisations that are making the changes in the countries with the women themselves around the world. Well, you won an award this week for using your voice um, and, and that status that you have for doing good. Celebrities are kind of in a difficult position at the moment because some have come under fire, really, for, for using that and being branded white saviours or whatever this is. Does it, do you think celebrities are ever put off using their voice? Um, well, I, I'd like to make the distinction. I don't consider myself a celebrity, although I know that other people might use that term right. to, to, to describe me. I, I think of myself as an artist mm. and an activist. And um, I think that we do have a platform. I have a history of, well, I've, I go way back with comic relief and, and uh, I have a whole history of activism and, and working on these mm -hmm. issues. And it is true that some of us um, perhaps jump onto causes uh, occasionally and money is raised and made and they, I don't know, it's a, it's a very, very tricky one. Um, I did speak to David Lamy. Mm. Oh, Personally, right. okay. I had a conversation with him because I want to understand better for my colour that is white, mm. how can I help my sisterhood, which is all colours, ev everywhere around the globe, how, how can I be part of a global sisterhood, which is what I think I've been doing and I don't feel that I can, I'm coming in as a white saviour, I'm looking at ways to help women empower themselves. Yeah. Do you think he was wrong to say that really, it was unfair? I think that it's a very controversial term and I think that David is very angry and mm. I think that his constituents, when, if they say they switch off coming relief, I think we really need to hear the voice yeah. of our population that feel, yeah. um, so that we can respond, be responsive to that. And it's not just about women actually, because men should be feminists too, should be allowed yes. to be feminists. Yes. And we don't want to alienate men. Yes either because I think many sometimes do feel a little bit like that for years and this is um, this term feminism and feminist has had a lot of difficulty for for many people that yeah. would like to say they were feminists but can't don't feel confident I, I was kind of in that place when I was a younger person but for years now I've said I'm very comfortable with the term feminism mm. you know but of late I've understood that this uh, this glorious term global feminism which actually is an inclusive umbrella 
term that can include everyone from every walk of life, every gender, sexual orientation, and boys and men. Mm. So that a man who maybe feels uncomfortable, you know, he agrees with feminism, but he may be saying, mm, maybe I can't say because maybe I'm not welcome. No, you're welcome. And you can call yourself a global feminist. Yeah. Learn, know the facts, know the stats, and help support women to uh, evolve and to have their lives change, change their lives, tra transform their lives for themselves. Yeah. Um, Emma Dale, as far as in the paper this morning I was reading, because Emma Dale, in order to celebrate um, this day tomorrow, they've got a special episode and, and they've sort of shifted the crew around so all of the, the, the cameras are, are women, are the writers and the producers and all this sort of stuff, all the actors, yes. women, just to sort of celebrate this day, like you said, celebrate yes. this day. And they've now come under fire, some are calling it sexist, that actually, you know, it's, it's unfair to do this. Well, you know, if it's... You're talking about one day yeah. where women sort of say, look, we're capable of doing all these in yeah. incredible things. I don't think that's sexist. I don't think one day no. particularly matters. And there's always going to be controversy because this is a hot debate, you yeah. know? And I think it's great that we can come out and have these dialogues and Get conversations. Get the conversation it's going. very important. And that conversation continues on Friday because you're joining many brilliant women, including the Duchess of Sussex, to speak about um, International Women's Day as part of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. And this is at King's College. What sort of things will you be talking about there? Well, I don't know. We have to see what they're going to ask me. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to think that Megan is expecting a baby. Yeah. And at this point in time, 99.9% .9 of women in developing the maternal mortality rate of deaths in the developing countries mm. is 99.9% in the world, you know. That's and horrible. so I think that when I would wish that she has a healthy, wonderful child mm. and gives birth. She will know by the time she becomes a mother that, and she already has that connection, she's an incredibly intelligent woman. When she becomes a mother, she'll relate to all the women around the world. I'm not, I'm not saying that she doesn't already, but that point of motherhood is actually the motivating uh, starter for me to understand that as a mother, I'm connected with other women around the world because of my motherhood. Yeah, 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 it's part of that circle. Yeah. And you do have uh, your girls who are, you know, they're in their 20s now, so you've gone through all of that. I'm at the very beginning of this process. You know, I have oh. a seven-year-old. There's so much pressure on social media. Partly, you know, the music industry is, is partly to do totally. with that, the image, the over totally. images we see. You know, your one piece of advice as a mother to another mother of a daughter, how to guide me through that. Oh, my goodness. You'll get so much advice and it will often be conflicting. But I would say one thing that listening and communicating is really, really important. Loving, listening, communicating. Yeah. These are three essential uh, qualities um, in the relationship between parents and, and children. And giving time to explain to your kids and, and uh, understanding also that they have their lives to lead and, and they're coming into a very, very new... Your daughter, by the time she becomes a teenager, everything's the landscape is going to change. So we just kind of have to take a deep breath, but just keep that... Keep the doors open for listening. Keep the communication. The yes, yeah. yeah. I think that's all we've got, really. That's Thank what we you. have. Um, it's always lovely to have you. I think you're it's wonderful. It's lovely to be Thank here. Thank you so much. Thank you.